everybody, uh, this lesson is called Normal Distribution. Don't forget all your lessons can be found at MrMathBlog.com. And if you guys can, would you guys click like and or subscribe if you haven't done so already? That would help encourage me. Okay, so uh, normal distributions are a bell-shaped curve. It's things that happen um, uh, in nature, basically. Um, uh, and so they make a nice bell-shaped curve. So here's the properties of a normal distribution, okay? And it deals with the standard deviation and uh, within your mean, your average, okay? So this is called sigma right here, and this is our symbol for standard deviation. So when you see this little goofy, it's kind of like an R with an extra little loop to it, a lowercase r. Okay, and so this, uh, this bell-shaped curve just means that um, it's going to have these following characteristics. This is called a normal curve or a normal distribution within one standard deviation from the mean. Okay, here's the mean. Uh, X bar right here. So if we go to the left one standard deviation, that is X bar minus uh, a standard deviation. If we go to the right, that's X bar plus standard deviation. So this is within one standard deviation from the mean. Okay, and it has to say it's normal. Uh, but and if it is normal, then 68% uh, of the data is within one standard deviation. Okay. And then within two standard deviations is 95% of the data. So here, here's a X minus one standard deviation, X bar, or the mean. Here's the mean minus two standard deviations. That's what this says. The X bar is mean minus two standard deviations. Over here is mean plus two standard deviations, okay? So mean is in the middle. One standard deviation, two standard deviations, and in this way, one, two. So within two standard deviations, if it's a normal population, 95% of the data lies within that. And then uh, within three standard deviations, not quite 100%, but almost 100%, 99.7% of the data is within three standard deviations from the mean right here. All right, so there's, of course, there's people past this. Like if you're talking salaries, this would be like Bill Gates or somebody way over here. In fact, he'd be way off the chart over here. His probability that you're as rich as Bill Gates is basically zero, okay? And then over here would be like the really poor people. Or if you're talking about heights, it would be the really short people. And these would be the Shaquille O'Neal's and all of that, if you guys know who that is anymore. Okay, so so one standard deviation is 68%. Two standard deviations is 90, uh, 95%. And three standard deviations is uh, 97.5. So here it is, 68, 95, 99.7. Let me do that again. 68, that's one standard deviation. 95 is two standard deviations. 99. 0.7 is three standard deviations. You guys got to know this. So I'm going to do it one more time. 68, 95, 97. One, two, three standard deviations from the mean of a normal curve. Okay. All right. So there's our curve right there. So the summary of the normal curves allows us to separate the area under the curve into eight equal little parts. Okay. Not equal. They're symmetrical and know what percent of the data is contained in that, okay? So if if one standard deviation is 68%, this right here is 68%. And since it's a normal curve, it's symmetrical. So if this is 68, then each side of these have to be 34% right there. Does that make sense? Okay, two standard deviations is 95%. So if it's 95% right there, and then from here to here is 68%, doesn't it make sense that the rest of the 95% or the 27% would have to be these two pieces because here's the one standard deviation at 68% and then so the two standard deviations is 95 so if I subtract them there's 27 left now if I split 27 into two equal parts we get 13.5 each all right and then those uh, th these pieces right here Okay, remember three standard deviations is 99.7%. So if two standard deviations is 95%, then 99.7 minus 95 means these two little pieces right here are the rest of that, so it's 4.7. Okay, so if I split 4.7 up, you get 2.35 and 2.35 right there. All right, and if the whole curve is 100%, and this is 99.7 all the way to here and here, then we have 0.3% more from 100%. So those little tails are uh, half of 0.3 is 0.15, okay? Half of thir uh, 0.30 is 0.15. 
0.15. Okay, so this little tail right here is the uh, 0.15 percent. So a decimal that would be even two more decimals, one, two to the left right here. So that would be the, the decimal value on that. Okay, so here's how we do this. The masses and grams of pennies minted in the U.S. after 1992 are normally distributed, need that with there, with a mean of 2.5 grams and a standard deviation of 2 grams. Okay, so here's this. There's the mean. And then since the standard deviation is 0 0.02, I just start subtracting 0 0.02 minus 0 0.02 minus 0 0.02. And then over here, plus the standard deviation, which is 0 0.02 plus a standard deviation, another point zero two plus another one right there, okay? That's how these numbers come up right here, okay? 250 minus point zero two is 2.48, minus point zero two minus point zero two. Over here, we just added the standard deviation, okay? All right, remember all the percentages, 34%, 34%. These guys here are 13.5 and 13.5. Okay, you got to know these, you guys. This is going to be 2.35. This is 2.35 percent. These are percents, and this is 0.15 percent. Okay, so we'll put those in there. Now that'll help us answer these questions. Find the percent of these pennies that have a mass between 2.46 and 2.54. So if you're in my class, I'm going to require that you graph this guy. 2.46 is right here. 2.54 is right here. Then we're going to shade in between all of that. We just add up all these numbers, these percentages, and that's going to get us 95% of the data. Okay, easy, huh? All right, let's do it again. Find the percent of the pennies that have a mass greater than 2.52. Greater than would be starting here and adding all of these guys right there. So if we add all those up, we get 16%. You guys with me? Easy, huh? All right, find the percent of pennies that have a mass that's less than 2.54. Okay, well, here's 2.54. It's all of these all the way over. That would be less than 2.54. So that's going to give us 97.5%. All right, let's try this. The bell's going to ring soon, so i got to hurry. The score on a test given in Mr. Bullock's class are normally distributed with a mean of 74 and standard deviation of 8. So here's our curve right there. There's the mean, and then plus 8, plus 8, plus 8, minus 8, minus 8, minus 8 right there. Okay, that's all we did. All right, so let's put in the percentages right there. you got to know those. All right, we can answer these. Find the percent of students whose score is between 74 and 90 from here to here. So what's that going to be? 47.5%. Um, uh, Okay, uh, find the percent of students that's at least 82. Well, that means 82 or bigger, so we'd add up all those. All right, find the uh, probability, same thing as percent, of scores that's less than 58. Okay, so that's this little area over here. We just add up those scores. Probability just means percent. Give your percent answer right there, okay? All right, if you are in my class, I would assign you guys that homework. Take care, you guys.